Hello and welcome back to BSG TV, the official YouTube page of the Bootstrapper's Guide. I'm Tori Norman and today we're going to continue our conversation on wave accounting with an episode that I know a lot of you have been waiting for, transactions. So up to this point we've done our settings, we've done our customizations. If you haven't watched those previous videos, you'll want to check those out. It prepares us for what we're doing today. For the rest of us, let's do some transactions. Now, there's a couple of ways to do transactions inside of Wave. I know we talked a little bit earlier about importing transactions from your bank, and we'll look at that a bit later. But before we do that, I want to show you how to do transactions inside of Wave independent of your bank account. As I've looked at both options, it's just easier for me. It just seems to be a natural flow to create the transactions first. Build your invoices, do your bills, make your payments, and then as your bank transactions come in, just link the two together and it's a great way to reconcile your bank statement it gives you kind of a second check but if you prefer you can definitely create the transactions right out of your bank statement and we'll look at that later for right now let's look at income transactions so we go to our income page and you've got two options create an invoice or quick entry create an invoice is really a detailed transaction um, most of your sales are probably going to be create an invoice because it allows you to list the items, it calculates your sales tax, um, it, it really is the full transaction. We'll look afterwards at a quick entry and get a feel for what that is and how it works, but um, that's more built for quick cash that comes in that you just need to stick somewhere. You can just assign to an account and be done. So uh, I don't think you're going to see yourself using the quick entry too much, but it's really handy when it's needed. So we'll look at that in a second. For right now, let's build an invoice. When our create an invoice screen comes up, we'll scroll this down a bit so you can see it. We've got our customer field here, and you'll recognize our Walmart customer that we built in our last episode. If you have a customer you haven't created yet, you can hit this little plus key, and it brings up that familiar create a new customer page that we talked about in our last episode. So if, I mean most of you should be familiar with this, so we're not going to spend a lot of time there. We'll create, we'll just use our Walmart customer, but uh, you can you can create them right there out of the invoice if you need it. You can also edit the address, and you'll see there's a lot of other customizations that we did last time that uh, may look familiar to you here. We've got our notes, our date settings, our currency settings, our taxes, those are all pre-filled for us because we've created them before. So that's really why the settings are so important. Uh, the invoice number, I'm not a big fan of starting with invoice number one. I kind of feel like it's like checks. No store ever wants to take check number one because it shows you've got no banking history. And I kind of feel like the same thing goes for invoices. It's a little less professional when you're handing them invoice one. It says, hey, I'm a greenie. And I don't I like to give a more professional image, so I usually start my invoices somewhere in the middle, like I'll say 350, just so it looks like you've got some history behind you. Our date the invoice is created is today. We want to change the due date. I want it for this customer. We're not going to make Walmart pay today. They've got a 30-day window, but uh, I can't change that there. This is actually changed right down here on the terms of payment. I can say due in 30 days, and when I do that, it's automatically going to change that date for me. If you aren't sure what terms of payment you should use for your clients, we have a really great uh, blog post on bootstrappersguide.net that talks about some statistics behind terms of payment and helps you decide kind of what might be best for you. So I'd recommend you check that out. If you're on our YouTube page, it'll be right below this video. And uh, so anyway, check that out. Our currency, we're going to leave the same. The POSO field. This is for purchase orders. A big company like Walmart will often have a form where they fill out what they want to purchase, get that approved by some manager, and then mail that to you. And this form is what you use to fulfill the order. And uh, that's either called a purchase order or a sales order. And you'll often want to reference that purchase order or sales order on your invoice. So we could do that here. Um, I don't think you're going to see a lot of clients use the purchase order, but if it's there, um, that field's there for that reason. It's not a required field, so I'm guessing most of you probably won't be using it. But there it is. Um, our products will say that we're using the, or they're buying the blue Wonder Widgets. You can add more items right from the page, just like with the customers. Uh, they're gearing up for Black Friday, so let's throw in 200 of them. 
And uh, here's our sales tax. You can see that it's pre-marked our Utah State sales tax. If we had multiple ones, we could check additional ones if we needed, like if you had a state and a local tax. I can even override the tax amount here if I want to. And that would recalculate my sales tax on the fly. I wouldn't recommend you do that. The calculations inside a wave are good, but if you have an exception situation, that's a really quick and easy way to do that. Um, once the invoice is completely created, we can save it and then open it as a PDF. I'll show you that in a second and print it from there, but you can even email them out. And I love this feature because it gets those invoices out to your clients a lot faster. And the faster they get it, the faster they pay it. So um, I like this. It's a handy feature. So let's go in here and send this to our customer. Boop, there it is. You can see it saved it behind us, and now it's offering to email it to us. Here's our client's email. I don't know who Big Cheese is at Walmart. I don't want to send this to them. <laughs> Usually you wouldn't have to change this, but let's throw in my Bootstrapper's Guide email address. See attached invoice. Send them a little message. Let them know what this is all about, and then hit send. And that just sent that, sent that off to my email address. We'll look at it in a second. Now that it's been saved, you can see here you've got your PDF options. You can open it up in PDF and uh, print it from there. Also, this is a draft. So you can create a whole bunch of invoices you haven't sent yet and save them as draft. And that reminds you that it still needs to be sent. Um, we've sent this invoice to a client, so I'm going to mark as sent. And you'll see that changes it right here and kind of solidifies that invoice and, and reduces some of your editing features because it's been sent to the client. It's a good reminder for you. So uh, we want to do that. And let's just flip over to my email really quick. You can see this is what the email looks like when it arrives from Wave Accounting. Let's them know there's an invoice. Let's them know what the dollar value is for it and then has a link for them to open it up in PDF form. So a uh, really handy, really professional, easy way to do, to do your invoicing. I'd really recommend you, you leverage that emailing feature. Um, when you have a payment come in for this invoice, you can go back to your income screen. You'll see this invoice is now available. It's been marked as sent. Um, we can click on this invoice and add a payment to it. Tell them what the payment is. So you can see it defaults to the full payment, but you can even add partial payments if you want into here. We can say the payment was made on the 30th. They actually paid us early. That was nice. And the payment account, the payments were made to the cash account. Looks like they only have a cash on hand asset account. I haven't built a bank account yet. We'll just throw it to cash on hand. I can leave a memo if I wanted to I can't spell you know that how sad is that there we go that's not a required field but you can leave yourself little notes if you wanted to and uh, now this is not only marked as sent but it's marked as paid so it's updating these invoices as we go and when we go to this income page it's keeping those statuses updated and you can filter by those statuses to get a feel for where your invoices are. So that's kind of a cool feature. Um, with the time we got left, let's look at quick entry really quick. You'll see that there's, this is really condensed. You don't get items on here. It's really just saying, where did the cash come from? Where's the cash going? The end. So we put the money in cash on hand. We'll, it came, we're going to put it to sales. It came from customer Walmart. You can see customer isn't even a required field. Maybe we just had money come in you know it was a refund check it was you know whatever you can just you, this is really to use for those weird one-off things where you need to record you had income but it really doesn't fit with an invoice uh, so you can just put that there uh, add a description refund of service something like that we'll put in ten dollars uh, check our taxes and hit add income so there we go. And we've got our income recorded. So that's a couple of different ways you can run transactions inside of Wave. You can see they both show up in there. In a few minutes, on our next episode, we'll look at how to create expense transactions and how those work inside of Wave. So check in with us again soon.